Hey babes, welcome to the Happiness Hills channel. My name is Miss T and today we're doing a flip through of the month of April in my budget by paycheck workbook. I figured that I would cover everything from my calendar all the way to my end of the month where did my money go worksheets so that you can kind of see how I organize and prepare this information. I'm not going to actually prepare my where did the money go worksheets but I'll talk through some of the important highlights and things that I've learned from my spending in the month of April and if you like like these videos make sure you give it a thumbs up because then I'll start doing them on a monthly basis so you can see kind of a recap of everything that occurred for me in that month and where my spending was allocated throughout the month so starting with the month of April I have a tutorial up in terms of how I put together my calendar I basically wanted to outline where my expenses were going to come from with each paycheck and highlight all of the different bills appointments and everything else that I would incur throughout okay. the month so then I did my first paycheck bill tracker for this month. I got paid on April the 3rd and I have a tutorial up as well about how I put this together so I won't go into a lot of details but I did outline both an estimated budget and an actual budget for my April 3rd payday and then I also put together a paycheck bill tracker for my second payday in April, April the 17th. And you can see here that I began highlighting on my actual payday when things come out of my account. So I don't highlight these amounts until it actually has cleared the account. Then I know for a fact that expense is accounted for. You will see here that I've highlighted essentially all of my expenses, except I did not end up paying the University of Maryland copay. I'm not sure why not <laughs> actually I think I was researching how to get that bill paid because I didn't have a current payment during that time so I didn't end up paying that and those funds probably either went to my checking buffer or other expenses throughout the month but I did note that I didn't pay for that as well as my daughter's senior pictures I think at this point I had to have my bank card replaced and they had my prior information and so this payment did not go through but I was able to later call and get that figured out and so that payment came out later to cover her senior photos. For variable expenses, you'll see that I don't highlight for this just simply because I know that those funds are there. I track them in my cashless tracker. And so I try to maintain them that way. And on this page, I was able to allocate my check and where I wanted all of those funds to go. You'll see I also highlighted things for that. It's funny, I realize now I did not highlight Christmas 2020 and I did actually pull money out for that. So let me grab that highlighter real quick and fill that in in real time. This is the right one. Let those funds did come out and get added to my sinking funds. And then also these medical bills. Yes, I did also pay those as well. Both of those. And then my checking cushion, I did add, I ended up spending some of that just with regular expenses, but we'll talk about that in my where did my money go section. And then also allocating money to emergency fund and savings cushion. I did add those amounts as well and you'll see they're highlighted. This is my April expense tracker. And as you can see, I have quite a few categories. I know the budget mom probably has about a dozen, but I have probably about 20 or so just because I like to really analyze my money even more closely. So for instance, the budget mom and a lot of others look at food as dining out and groceries, just food in general for the month. But for me, I like to really see, am I spending more on groceries? Am I spending more on dining out? Am I improving in either of those sections? So I actually count them separately. Gas, I count separately from my other car expenses. My pet, I count him individually. Medical expenses, I have just a lot of categories, but for me personally, this doesn't necessarily have to be the case for everyone. It just helps me really see more closely where my money is going. Being able to kind of dissect it even more works better for me. That is why you'll see there are so many colors here. And I know a lot of people say visually you can see where someone puts all of their money just by looking at their tracker, but you can see. <laughs> I have expenses in a lot of different categories. I think medical is a big one for my family just simply because we're paying some outstanding medical bills as well as 
paying ongoing medical copay expenses. And this is another page of expenses. You will also note that this particular month, I did not use any cash. So everything came off of my card, which was good because it helped me with tracking a lot. But then I realized that I do sometimes need to have a little cash in my wallet. Like if I forget my card or something to that extent, I just like having a backup plan. So you'll see in May, I've converted back to having a little bit of cash in my wallet. It and but the majority of my expenses are still coming out of my account and I call that my minimal cash budgeting approach so now we get to the where did my money go worksheet pages the first one that I've completed is the debt payment plan and the first thing I will say I am not an expert on the how to complete these pages which is why I don't do regular videos on them but I thought it was useful because you don't really see a lot of youtubers who will share this information primarily because we're probably all not sure if we're doing it 100% correctly but then also um, it's just personal it's just very personal and so I had to think on this very hard but I do want to use my page to help and encourage others with budgeting and wellness and all of that so I cannot be fearful of debt anymore if I want to overcome my debt I just have to keep working and plowing through so you'll see in the month of April I listed out all of my expenses some of these balances are not 100% accurate like for instance my car loan just simply because they do not show me even online how that amount adjusts each month so I've just been plugging in kind of what the original amount was that obviously throws off my total debt amount but it at least just in other ways showing offsets to see that number coming down when it needs to come down put in all of my creditors that I'm aware of balances interest rates minimal payments and then also extra debt payments so this month because I received that stimulus payment I wanted to make sure that I made some significant debt payments and a lot of them obviously were towards medical expenses expenses because that's my number one debt priority right now. So I made a total in debt payments of $1,373.75. You'll see that actually my debt progress went up <laughs> in a sense. But like I said, I think that's because some of these balances aren't 100% accurate. So I wouldn't necessarily focus in on that one. For me, my biggest takeaway was that I made a significant dent in my debt payments this month, particularly in medical, which is my number one priority. I do not complete the monthly net worth tracker. I'll be honest with you. Some of the things here, I'm just not sure about how they should be balanced out. For instance, I recently purchased a new Jeep in November. Technically, it's an asset because I own it and it's mine. And I'm like, do I track it based on the Kelly Blue Book value? But then it's also a liability because I financed it and I do have a monthly note. Some of those things I'm just not 100% sure of. Maybe I need to look at a few more of the budget mom's videos but for now I just don't fill this page out in any of my months for my track. The next page is the monthly budget category breakdown and in this page I get a lot of good information actually. As I mentioned I keep track of a lot of different categories. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I have 24 categories here. Believe it or not, I have highlighters to cover all of them. And the big thing for me is really being able to break out how much I'm spending over or under each month and trying to challenge myself to improve on that. This month, you'll see I wrote in my budget. Because we're under a stay at home order where I live, I do have a lot of categories where I'm just not spending right now. A lot of things have come down in terms of my expenses. For my daughter, my expense as you'll see, was pretty much the same as what I budgeted. I only needed to cover her senior pictures, which we did. And then groceries, I'm actually proud of myself because I can't remember when I spent $245 on groceries in an entire month in a long time, even though I only budgeted $260. And then I came in under that. That was a major accomplishment for me. Normally, I'm way over in groceries, so that was really great. Dining out, you'll see, <laughs> I budgeted $270, but then I almost spent like $400. And I can remember it's not because we eat out so much. It's more or less because 
of where we like to eat out. We're not the McDonald's family, which I wish we were in some ways. That would definitely be good for the budget, but we tend to like to go to like the restaurants where we enjoy eating and just get carry out or take out right now. I was quite a bit over in terms of dining out. Also for medical, these are just ongoing co-pays. This is not my outstanding debt. And I was a little bit over, but I was actually pretty proud of myself for budgeting in the right ballpark for where my expenses would be. Also for my pet, I ended up over because I didn't realize that he had a, or actually I think one of his appointments got rescheduled. And so he ended up having a vet appointment as well as an eye appointment. He has issues with his health in both areas. And so that pushed our expenses up a little bit more because he needed some additional testing just to make sure he's doing okay. I was over quite a bit in the pet category. Beauty, I originally had estimated to spend a more significant amount and came in way under that, which was great. Gas and car wash. I think in this area is where I'm really killing it right now because gas prices are just so low. I was able to come in significantly under that amount as well. If we jump down here to miscellaneous, I actually spent a bit more on that and that's where I've now added in shopping in May and I think June as well because I noticed that with us being home, I think of little things that we need or we want from Amazon or online and that's where those miscellaneous or shopping expenses start creeping up. So you can see I did end up spending a lot more than I originally estimated in terms of miscellaneous expenses. And that's where some of those offsets where if you notice I didn't pay for something, some of that extra money may have went to these categories where I was over significantly. Bills, actually that came down significantly for this month in April. And I think a lot of that has to do with the stay at home and some of our expenses like my gym membership being waived. I was able to save significantly there. Savings, I didn't save quite as much as I wanted to. And then extra debt, as you can see, I originally planned to spend $730. I do, I will say, we just looked at my debt payment. I did do quite well in terms of paying off a lot of my debt. The one area where I mentioned earlier, I did not pay that University of Maryland payment. And I know that impacted this amount here. And that money most likely went to one of these other categories where I went over a bit. Birthdays. This is another one where I ended up spending money that I didn't originally budget for, but it was for a very good cause. Someone in my family, I wanted to just thank for all of their help that they've provided to my family during this time. And so that's an area where I spent $100 that I didn't really originally budget for. Business is also a newer category for me because I'm starting to see myself have expenses associated with my business and I want to track that and then also kind of come up with a separate budget as I get those amounts and expenses stabilized. So I've just been kind of adding it to my regular budget categories, but I do plan to actually create a separate budget for my business soon so I can start tracking it separately. I originally planned for $100 basically in a sinking fund for my business. I did end up spending that because I needed some more technology to assist with some things that I'm doing. So I ended up going over by $30.62. And then my Be Happy Fund as I mentioned to you, I highly recommend and advocate for that. It's basically my personal fund to spend on things that I like and enjoy. I originally had set aside $80 for that and ended up spending significantly more. Part of this is because I had wanted to put money towards the Sephora VIB sale. And that actually I had originally budgeted in, now that I think about it, in beauty. So the reason why beauty may be lower is because I didn't really account for that expense in in beauty, I counted for it in my be happy fund. And so that's over, but in my beauty is under, but I guess it kind of could balance out in the sense in terms of my spending. Not totally, but at least it answers for me kind of why those amounts vary so much. For my monthly debt and savings breakdowns, I put in what my debt amounts were for the month, debt as well as savings. And you can see that I paid off $1,373.75, which is 20% of my income. And then for savings, I was able to actually set aside $1,701.55, which is almost 25% of my income. In those categories, if you think about what I allocated towards savings and debt, almost half of my income were towards these two very important parts of my budget. I outlined all the things that I pay for in terms of debt, my savings and sinking funds. I really made some significant milestones with savings this month, thanks to the 
stimulus check as well as just allocating my funding more towards the extra savings category. And then last but not least, and actually I will take this out and cover it because I don't like to share the budget mom proprietary information and I know her savings challenges are an important part of her business. So I'm gonna cover that up. Here in my monthly spending comparison, I was able to compare what I spent in March versus April and both of these months have been impacted by the stay-at-home orders. So it's been interesting to see which categories are affected the most. And from March to April, you will see my income has gone down some. Primarily, I think, because March was still kind of built on my federal tax return money, which I received in February and some of the rollover from that. And then April is still significant though, because I received the stimulus payment. There is a $400 difference though, between what I received for income in April versus March. And then for March, you'll see my daughter's expenses are pretty much the same. It's just primarily her senior pictures that I've been paying for. Groceries, here's where you'll see that huge difference. In March, I was spending $817.50 on groceries, 10% of my income, whereas in April, $245.05, which is only 3.5%. And honestly, I think a good bit of that reduction came from me kind of stockpiling when things started to get more serious with the current situation. And so I didn't need to do as much spending in April and that helped me save. So I was down by $572 from month to month. Dining out, I spent $536 in March. I was down to $399. It's still $137 and it went down. So obviously we're not eating out as much, but we do tend to still eat out quite a bit. And I want to continue to work on adjusting that number. Recreational, we really haven't been doing any recreational activities. Even in March, we didn't do a whole lot, $6 worth. Medical is still a significant portion of our expenses. It's still just 1.6 and 2.7. It did go up this month, but the most important piece there is that there are just some ongoing appointments that we have, especially for my daughter that I do not want to cut back on and we can't afford to cut back on. So medical is what it is. Pet for my dog, he had two significant appointments this month, which were a significant expense. And so that area did go up by $322. And you'll see the allocation of income 2.7 for pet here versus 7.5 here. So it went up significantly, but I'm going to expect that it will go back down in May and June because he doesn't have another appointment until July. Beauty is another area where in March it was 4.2%, which was $321. I got my hair done that month. The last time I got my hair done before the salons closed. And then this month, obviously it went down to $104. And a lot of that had to do with primarily finding ways to try to keep ourselves going, knowing that we couldn't go to the salon or the nail shop anymore for a while. We are saving now in beauty, which is good. We went down $216 in terms of spending. Gas and car wash, we spent $86.68, about 1% of our income in March. However, it went down to $61. Nowhere to go. <laughs> we just go back and forth to the grocery store or, you know, running small errands. We're saving in terms of gas. And then transportation, as I mentioned, I'm not really needing that expense right now. Car expenses, here was actually a rental car payment that I had to make in March because someone had hit my vehicle and they ended up reimbursing me for this expense expense, but it still came out of my account initially. And so 4.5 of my income was accounted for there, but I haven't had any car expenses uh, in April. Charity is another area where I normally do like to put money there and I haven't been. So I definitely am planning to restart that in May. Household is another area where I was spending money to kind of fix up some things in our house in March, but I've cut back on a lot of that here in April. Dry cleaning, another area where I had some things that were left over from when I was going in the office cleaned. I haven't really had a need to do that in April. Shopping, we spent $390 here in March. This was right before the stay-at-home orders took effect and I can't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure it had to be clothing or shoes or something to that effect. This month I really haven't set aside anything. We didn't have a need for shopping. Anything extra that we purchased went into this miscellaneous category. In March, you can see miscellaneous 
miscellaneous was about $125, uh, a little over one and a half percent of income. And in April, it's ramped up a little bit more. And like I said, that really accounts for like Amazon purchases or other random purchases that I didn't anticipate. And now it's about 3% of income. I do plan on bringing that back down because I just don't want to get into that habit of just buying things online just to feel like we're having retail therapy. <laughs> Christmas and holidays. Obviously, Christmas is over and there haven't been any significant holidays for us for March or April, so no expenses there. Travel, I paid for the Go Wild trip that was supposed to happen this month in April. I paid for the second half of my ticket, I think is that amount there. And obviously that was rescheduled for actually now 2021, I'm learning. I don't have an expense here in April and any travel money that I start allocating will go more into my sinking fund. Sinking funds, I set aside $527 in March. And as you can see, I'm in the same ballpark, 548 in April. Went up a little bit, but not that significantly. I had $2,600 $646.43 for bills, which is about 35%. It actually went up in April to $2,909, which is about 41%. So it's gone up a little bit from March to April. Savings, I set aside $368, 4.8%, whereas in April, I ramped that up a lot more to $698.55. So we've almost doubled how much we're saving, and I want to continue to do that. Extra debt, we were paying $140 in March. It's now up to $480 in April. We went from 1.8% to 6.8%, a whole 5% increase. More money is going towards paying down debt. Birthdays and special days, $281 paid in March. A lot of that had to do with the February birthdays in my family. I was still buying gifts or catching up for that. That was 3.7%, whereas in April, I've pretty much paid those off and I had to just one or gift towards someone. And that was only 1.4% of my income. Business, as I mentioned, I've been starting to track that as well. In March, I spent $153.57, about 2% of my income. As you can see in April, I spent 130, but actually it's about 2% of my income as well. So business is being a consistent expense now. Be happy fun. I didn't really allocate anything towards that in March, but in April, yes, I have made a significant dent in my be happy fun for the month of April. That is pretty much where things are in terms of my monthly spending and where did my money go for this month. As I mentioned, this is my first time doing one of these flip throughs of my budget worksheet for the month, but I hope it was helpful. I'm not an expert on these where did my money go worksheets, which is why I don't do specific tutorials on them, but I think it's just helpful kind of walking it through each page and some of the things that I learned or recognized for myself in terms of my spending for the month. So that maybe when you go back and look at yours, you can also look at some of these areas and see where you can improve things. And then also you get a feel for what my budget categories are because they vary for everyone. Some people are more detailed and then others kind of like to put them in larger buckets and look at it that way. So that is what my finances look like for the month of April, what I've learned and some of those things I'm working to improve in May. But I hope this is helpful. I hope that it at least helps you in terms of looking at at your finances more closely. And if you have any questions about putting together any of those where did my money go worksheets, except for the net worth sheet, that one I still can't quite tackle. If you have any questions about any of the others, please let me know in the comments below. I will be vigilant to try to help with answering any of your questions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be informed the very next time we have something to share on the Happiness Heals channel. Ciao!